Okay, let's get the view of Stephen Nash, who joins us this morning from Fig Securities. Um, Stephen, vicious uh, sell-off for, for bond prices. Do you see any kind of alarm in any of that? And the comparison has been made to maybe the start of a sovereign debt crisis over in Europe. I realise that's an yeah. exaggerated kind of example, but it's out there. That's a possibility. Yeah, well, I think uh, to some extent the market got a little bit uh, pessimistic with regard to growth uh, prior to the QE2 announcement and probably rallied a little bit too too far in terms of US Treasuries. Uh, we're getting the opposite now. Markets are um, now bringing everything forward and uh, expecting a recovery by Q2, tightening by Q4. I think, I think the two and the four are right, but the Q's wrong. I think it'll probably be a recovery in two years and tightening in four. So I think we've got a long time before uh, there is going to be any uh, problem with funding in terms of US Treasuries. I think the market is basically taking on this tax deal and getting a little bit concerned about the funding side of it and possibly the, the rating aspect as well. I saw one analyst say this is a disaster for the fiscal position for the United States. Oh, look, I think, <laughs> I, I think the, the, the fiscal position, everyone's known about the fiscal position for quite a while. This, this is adding to it, yes, but it's also good to see, as we've been discussing previously, you know, we've had a lot of monetary stimulus, now we've got some fiscal kicking in. It's, it's a very positive development for the economy broadly, but still there's a lot of, lot of growth that has to happen before we have any problems. Hasn't this though done in a masterstroke what, what Bernanke couldn't do, mm. and that's raise inflation expectations? Exactly what the Fed wants to have happen. Mm. It did it damnedest. It was even talking, you know, murmuring QE3. Um, and then Obama comes in over the top and yields go crazy. That's telling you inflation is a much more present threat. And that's actually something the Fed's welcoming. Well, look, I, I think the Fed would prefer longer rates to be lower, than, lower rather than higher. I think, yes, the, the inflation expectations uh, should stabilise. I think next year it would be good to see inflation stabilise rather than uh, continue down. I think that would be the plan for the Fed. Hopefully in 2012 we get a slight increase in, in inflation back towards maybe 2%, but that's, that's about it. So I, I think getting too concerned about inflation now is probably the wrong wrong way to go. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, ultimately QE2, they're also trying to mm. get the stock market going, mm. get that pushing high, but that really hasn't happened the last two days. Well, not, not in the last two days, but we have, had, we have got a fairly elevated level of, of equity prices. If you look at it broadly for the year, we, we're closing on a high. I mean, it's, it's basically pretty optimistic. And I think there's a lot of investment banks out there talking, talking this up and getting everyone quite optimistic. And I think yeah. that it's, it's probably partly this talk uh, you know, uh, about growth and that, that a tightening is only a few months off, possibly, yeah. that's getting people worried right now. I think that's over, been overplayed. So what do you think mm. is an indication of whether this will start to work and flow through to the economy? I know Dave DeGarris from the NAB was saying yesterday he wants to see the next set of confidence figures. Obviously, that'll be pretty key to see that's already flowing through to confidence. What I are think, you watching I think now? confidence is important. Also, jobless claims. We want to get those jobless claims. claims down. Obviously, employment. We want to get that, that uh, continuing. There's also a lot of other survey data that's, that's coming through, which has all been a little bit firmer, and, and it's, it's good to see. But yeah. then again, we need, we need a lot of growth for a long time to have an yeah. inflation In problem. In terms of measuring that, that impact of the tax cuts, so, mm. on, on the broader economy, what would you watch? I would have thought jobless claims would be something to That's a really that. curious thing, yeah. though, because yeah. at, at the same time as the tax cuts were announced, mm. there was an extension announced mm. in the same thing of jobless benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so therefore, why would claims fall if implicitly you're being told uh, in an uncertain environment this is a guaranteed take-home when you're out of the jobs market, Look, which I, in some ways uh, trumps even a low-paid job? It's, it's that's a bit harsh, I think. If you're unemployed and you've been so for quite a while, I think the, the, the Democrats are trying to get some relief for people who are in a pretty serious situation. I mean, you're sitting there with 10% unemployment, yeah. but your prospects are not looking that crash. Well, that, 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 that's Good. my point, though, that if, if hours are being pruned back and yeah. you're not getting really what you were yeah. once getting, so you're having to work longer for less, yeah. and you're on the unemployment queue, why would you go into the jobs market knowing benefits were flowing your way for sitting at home? Well, I think, I mean, logically, anyone would prefer to have a job to not, to, to not having a job. Obviously, there's a lot of other things that flow from having a job, particularly access to credit and other, and other issues. And yet the chat is always of downsizing and you're kind of mm. thinking, well, am I even worth, my, my ego's been battered that much more. Why would I go in and have another hammering? Well, that's, that's one thing that Bernanke indicated. He's worried about this uh, yeah, in, in his recent uh, TV appearance, which was quite unusual, I thought. But anyway, the, 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 the unemployment, you know, six months and over is, is a real concern and that there's a bit of a productivity aspect to that, that uh, skills are being eroded. And what they're trying to do is 
uh, make sure that that doesn't continue. Uh, can I also ask you on the, on the tax cut extension, is there um, a realistic worry about the credit rating of the United States? It was something Moody's flagged on the back of Look, it. I think, uh, you know, again, that a lot of that was already in the market. The people were, have been concerned, logically, that, that they should be concerned. But with the largest consumer economy in the world, I think the US has some time. But I think Moody's have sort of drawn the line and said around two years. They've got to start to get that wind that back within well, that's a few the thing. years. It's only been extended for two years. We know that in that space of time there will be a presidential election campaign. Yeah. We know that the Tea Party, which is ramping to get Sarah Palin as a candidate, has been really quiet over this. Mm. What will happen with more uncertainty yet again mm. over whether they will just scrap them? I mean, they're trying to wipe the deficit. You can't wipe the de deficit with tax cuts. So they've got to come out with a, a firm policy. Well, inside of two years. Well, I think the Fed and the, the Fed's being very supportive of the idea of reining the deficit in uh, over the medium term. I mean, where would we be now if the US had been following the European approach of austerity? I think we'd be in a pretty bad position. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I, I think they've done a good job. I think yet yeah, the, the next two years are going to be really critical, and hopefully they'll they'll be able to rein that deficit in. I think that's a really important. Mm. issue yeah. but it's more more a medium term issue oh, yeah. but you say with all this it's now becomes even more important we don't see some sort of european sovereign default or some yes. sort of major restructuring is that right well i think now that the us has effectively spent its bullets it's got two years to get things together yeah mm -hmm. if there was any disruption in that period which which takes the US down again, they've effectively haven't got much left. The fiscal, the fiscal bullets have been spent, monetary, po monetary policy has been exercised as much mm -hmm. as it can. I think this, this next year or so in particular is, is going to be very important to prevent any major problems, particularly with the European banking system. I think that the knock-on effect of any restructuring or default from European sovereign is, is going to be quite severe. The dollar rally, which is uh, not a good news for the US export sector, is what, short-lived blip? Are uh, we going to see more selling in that as Europe stabilises, hopefully? Well, how are you reading that? Um, yeah, I, I, I'd imagine that you know, it's important for the US to get that dollar down a bit, mm. bit more. I mean, there's been, as you know, a lot of problems with the euro, euro-centric problems. I think that the, the good thing that could come out of this is more fiscal coordination between the various states. Mm. I mean, you think about it. I mean, if, if Europe could get a fiscal consolidation, it could act a lot more like the US is doing and, and not be contractionary it could be more much more neutral or possibly expansionary but with with this fractured uh, bond market they've got they can't they can't do that they can't use the power of the union for their own good they're, they're being picked off by the market in, in bits and pieces yeah out. but then again if, if one of the states we do have to go but if one of the states in the US really got into trouble is there a backstop for them you just said all the all the well, bullets have been fired it's, it's the peripheral market in, in, the, yes. in the back backyard of the US yeah. uh, I think uh, that that the authorities would make sure that there wouldn't be any major problems from it, but there could be a bit of an alarm yeah. that, that's caused if there was a, a restructuring or a, or a default of one of the states. Yeah. Well, California just declared state of emergency mm. yesterday over its economy. I guess the IMF is always ready with plane ticket booked <laughs> so, to jet on down. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cheers. Um, Stephen Nash, thank you so much. Stephen Nash from Big Securities. Never enough time.